amazing. Thank you all for joining me here for Made in UK Day. Thank you for everyone watching in. So we're going to talk to the, the theme for this session is about boosting my local economy. <laughs> so before we get on to that, do you just all want to introduce yourself? So I'm going to start with Karen and Neville because you're top of my screen. Do you just want to say um, what it is your what your business name is, what it is that you make, and whereabouts you're based? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. We are Karen and Neville Cloakey. We're from NC Lancaster, and part of that business is Stollett Cushions. We manufacture cushions here in Lancaster. Amazing. And Steph, you're next. Hi, exciting to be here. Um, Steph from Something Wicked. Um, we are a luxury lingerie brand. Everything's made in the UK. As a brand, we stand for female empowerment. Really important for us that filters all the way through the brand. You can't empower women in one country and exploit them in another, which is why all our manufacturing takes place at our studio in Leeds. Amazing. And finally, you, Alison. Introduce yourself and tell everyone where you're based. Hi, uh, I'm Alison. Um, we're based in Kelso and Scottish Borders. Uh, we've got our own uh, manufacturing network company here. Uh, we're a ma micro manufacturer, um, so we've got one stall machinery um, and we've got five of us that um, knit and hand finish everything every day. Um, yeah, this is us. We make uh, bespoke accessories mainly um, and the majority of the stuff that we do would be uh, we have our own brands, uh, but we also make for lots of different companies as well, from uh, sports teams to different um, uh, apparel brands, uh, to anybody really. So yeah, custom hats is what we specialise in. Brilliant. And you're in the Scottish borders, aren't you, Alison, which is an area yeah. renowned um, for quality knitwear. So why yeah. do you think it is important right now to support local businesses? Um, well, everybody's been through such a time of it, really, haven't they? Um, I mean, we've always been an advocate for um, supporting local businesses and helping where we can and making sure that our supply chain is as close to our, our factory as possible. Um, but really, yeah, with supporting local businesses at the moment, it's all about um, boosting the economy, um, making sure that we can keep the keep all the money in the circular economy, um, and that is local as well as the wider UK um uh, areas so I suppose that's probably one of the most important things just now um, also if we haven't got money in the economy then we can't um, reinvest in our team in our um, the development of the business as well so um, by people buying from us then uh, yeah we're able to continue to, to reinvest redevelop keep the industry alive as well because I mean there's a lot of businesses that have gone out of, of, of business unfortunately um, so yeah, it's just really like everybody can do their own little bit, and we—I mean, we're a tiny company, but um, we support. We've got a team of five people here, um, and we like to think that we bring something um, new and innovative to the knitwear industry in the Scottish borders. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's lots of benefits to to supporting um, small businesses and to to make sure that we're we're uh, keeping the manufacturing industry alive in the UK. How, how many Scottish? Um... How many knitwear firms do you think there are still remaining in the Scottish borders? Um, well, there's the big ones. I mean, like Johnson's of Elgin, William Lockie. They've been around for donkey's years. So they're the ones that are kind of have a, a real uh, legacy um, in, the, in, the, in the borders. I mean, they're still developing and diversifying as well because they're traditional knitwear companies, but they're also um, quite high fashion too. Um, so they've got that kind of heritage, but then also the fashion aspect of it as well. Um, then there's lots of like smaller brands like um, House of Chibia, for example, they're based in, in Hoik and they are a factory pretty much about the same size as us and they make uh, their own socks. So it's like hunting, fishing, shooting socks. But they're also bringing that to a more kind of cool, like younger sort of vibe. So it's got that heritage, but also the modern quirk with it too. Um, and then you've got companies like Aribe, they're based in Gala Shields. Um, they are a, a, a really strong brand. They've been going since the 90s. Um, they started out as cottage cottage industry as well, and now they've gone global. Um, so yeah, there's quite a lot of, um, and then there's a lot of like unique little makers as well that do like the markets and stuff too. So um, yeah, certainly the area is still synonymous with textiles and knitwear. Um, yeah, 
when you're here it's, it's booming so yeah it's all still going on <laughs> i need to come half and visit you definitely yeah definitely <laughs> neville and karen then so you make cushions in lancaster how many people do you employ i know look at those cushions <laughs> and make it look super comfy <laughs> i'm gonna need that yeah, yeah. Yeah. Later. <laughs> how many people do you employ and how do you recruit staff in the local area and find the skills in your local area um Across the business, there's about 22, 23 of us. Um, in terms of recruitment, that's a real challenge. That really is a challenge because the skills that we require, um, sewing machinists, are they're, uh, very hard to find. And uh, so it is a challenge. We, we recruit. Probably our best method of recruitment is word of mouth, actually. And um, we, but we also use... Uh, companies like Indeed and advertise at Job Centre Plus, etc. Uh, but word of mouth and Indeed are the most successful for us when it comes to recruitment. But there's there's no denying it. That really is, uh, it is a challenge. Part yeah. of the problem is that most of the uh, machinists, because Lancashire and Lancaster obviously have um, a heritage in sewing, and um, there used to be an awful lot of, uh, there was Brian Yates that um, is no longer, there was the K Shoe Factory as well. And a lot of the machinists that we employ now started and cut their teeth at the K Shoe Factory and the m and Knickers are down in Marks. Um, in Morecambe, there used to be a, a, a manufacturing plant in Morecambe that did um, underwear for m and One of the things that I'd be keen to explore and find out what everybody else thinks is um, getting young people direct from school rather than um, we've tried apprenticeships and I think the the next step for us will be to actually reach out to schools and colleges and go in and say look this is the kind of career that you could have and start people right from scratch so we can train them into our methods and basically once you're a machinist you're a gun for hire aren't you really because there's so many people need machinists and skilled ones at that so I think the next approach has got to be training our own talent basically i don't know what anybody else thinks yeah steph what about you then i mean that's interesting what um what we've just heard there about there being a lingerie factory but m and obviously used to make a huge amount of lingerie in the uk i was there when they stopped doing all that and they sent mm -hmm. it all off overseas so you know for you how do you find people to work for you in your micro factory in leeds you're sorry you are leeds aren't you yes no based in Leeds and I'm actually at home today because if I was in the studio it's very very noisy with all the machines going and all the rest of it I thought it'd be quieter here um but no it's it's a really interesting point so what you say about sort of you know getting the next generation of people into manufacturing so we have quite strong links with Huddersfield University um and we offer work experience for the sort of the textiles and fashion and costume um because as a brand that manufactures in the UK um, you know, we're quite unusual, especially in lingerie, that we make everything from start to finish production line um, here. Um, a lot of the time it's, you know, a company with, uh, it's a website and boxes of stock, um, whereas everything's made there. So we can offer the students that sort of hands-on experience. And, um, you know, what we've seen is is that that there's more enthusiasm now, especially off the back of COVID and Brexit and people wanting to reach or start up it is becoming now that is you know rightly seen as it's a skilled job it's a career um and more and more young people are wanting to to, to get into that side of things the actual making side that's brilliant that is really good to hear that's been a topic that's come up quite a lot throughout the day and the discussions we've had today about you know getting schools involved getting colleges involved and also that you know all three of you i'm sure i've got the most amazing working environments there's this kind of thought that a, a factory equals you know loads and loads of people in rows just churning stuff out when actually if you work for a small business that's making in the uk you get to be really hands-on and really involved in it all don't you there's a real kind of diversity in terms of what you do um what so this is a question to all of you i'll start with you alison what more can the government do because we've just did our made in made in uk survey and every, you know the resounding response from everyone was that they would like to see the government do more to encourage people to buy products that are made here in the uk Alison, what do you think um that they could do to kind of highlight businesses like yours that are making here um i think probably promote us more would be 
like the main thing. Um, because you do like you hear about like big businesses getting, I don't know, X, Y, and Z investment, and you understand that because they employ a lot of people. But also equally, if like the local government is really focused in on all the micro businesses, then like that is going to have quite a big spread, like quite a big reach, and that will be, and it maybe resonates more with people as well because like. Like we know we're five people working in in our workshop here, but if you were promoting like us and what we do, for example, then all the people that we know around us would hopefully be supportive of that, and they would have that sort of that hook because they might know us or they might know our family members or do you know you have that kind of like almost personal buy-in, and um, I think as well like it's like we try to promote ourselves as much as possible um, online. But um, yeah, just to have that kind of backup, I think, from the government um, would be would be ideal, really. Yeah, that's a really good point about that kind of local buy-in and people kind of knowing that you're there and that how many different might, the, the, you know, the, the, I don't know the exact number, but that, you know, the, all those micro businesses that are, because that is part of the problem, I think, that a lot of manufacturing that isn't, air and you know all auto, the automotive industry or you know aeroplane parts engineering things get forgotten like more of the kind of softer side like the, most of the businesses that are members of make it british like yourselves you know textiles homeware fashion um so, so many micro businesses and they all kind of get a little bit forgotten so which is part of the reason we're doing made in uk day today as well <laughs> um do you have any more thoughts on that steph about what more you'd like to be seen done to to champion businesses like yours, particularly from those at number 10? Absolutely. I think there's a big education piece to be had here. Um, you know, the last few decades, fashion um, and textiles have seen as very much a disposable somehow. And the idea that um, you can go and buy a T-shirt for £2 or every time you go out, you get a different outfit. It's seen as um, disposable. People aren't realising what goes into it. And yes, there's there's choice there for consumers. You can buy something cheap. But if you're buying something cheap, you think, why was it so cheap? If I'm not paying, somewhere down the line, someone else is. And the idea that, you know, educating um, people in this country that to buy something that's made in the UK, it might cost more. But think about the processes that's gone in, the skill that's gone into making those things, the people who've made it. Um, have been paid and treated fair. So that whole education side of things so that people can then make a choice because people might be thinking, oh, I'll buy that for a fiver uh, where it wants. And, you know, it's not just the, the moral and ethical side of things, it's the sustainability side of things as well. Yeah, definitely. Neville and Karen, have you got any more, anything else to add to that? Any messages that we can send out about how businesses like yours can be supported? Yeah, I mean, a couple of our customers export product, not necessarily on the cushion side, but some of the cushions customers, but other products that we manufacture go into, um, into assemblies, do get exported. And as, an ex as a, a UK manufactured product, it is, there's a real perception um, within certain markets outside the UK that if it's a UK manufactured product, you're getting a real high quality item. And... I don't think that within the UK we necessarily recognise the fact that um, a UK product really should be uh, considered a standard bearer for quality as well as all of the other points that we've made. Yeah, yeah, that's, I know there's been surveys done in the past in international markets asking, you know, which country do you rate the highest for quality of products? And, and the UK always comes at, like, at least in the top three of those surveys. You're right, that it's a real kind of stamp of quality. And I think because of Brexit as well um, and all the other sort of um, situations going on at the moment, people are starting to look at the, the air miles and the miles things have travelled to get to them to be sold. And now the price comparison is, is becoming more of a par, really. You can afford to get your stuff made in the UK and you're cutting down on the miles it's travelled to get to your end just ultimate customer. So we are finding more people wanting to make in the UK. Some of them jib and say, oh, well, it's a little bit more, it's more expensive than China. Well, of course it is. We're paying people properly, proper wages. They've got mortgages to pay as, as well as we have. Um, but we're finding more people inquiring about making in the UK. So it is a big thing. So if we had more of Make It British, um, then I think the, it would give the government more of a push. 
Yeah, definitely. And of course, there's real challenges at the moment for everyone and particularly businesses um, with all the rising costs. How How is your business trying to mitigate that? Um, to first to you, Neville and Karen. Um, it, it's, that, that's the most live topic of all at the moment, really, that raw material costs and, and all of the services, etc., are all are all going up. And of course, you don't. No one ever wants to pass on price increases to their customers, but unfortunately, that is now inevitable, uh, and we're having to do it. We're, we are finding, in actual fact, that customers are, whilst no one's happy to have that conversation, they're somewhat more understanding the, um, in the current climate than they might normally be. But I think it's inevitable that prices are going to have to rise. We, Particularly, we, we've um, we've come out of a, uh, a um, energy supply contract with British Gas, and our um, energy supply at the moment has gone up by a factor of three compared to what we were paying. And that right here and right now, they're not even offering free, fixed price contracts because the, the price volatility, and that's just a one indirect cost that all businesses are having to face at the moment. Mm. But then that's more, even more of a reason to buy something like we've just said that's good quality that lasts, because at least you're getting better value for money. If you can, if you are, if your budget is really stretched, buy less of better quality. Yeah, what exactly. yeah. yeah. that's what um, like what we do here as well because uh, the majority of the stuff that we make is made to order, um, and like you used to. Used to, we used to get inundated with people coming to us saying, um, all right, I've been to a, a factory in um, Asia and I'm trying to buy a thousand units. And immediately we were just like, nah, it, I mean, it doesn't work for us. It's not the way that we operate. So we've always been trying to encourage people to, um, if it's a new thing, to potentially do like a pre-order. Uh, so then the, it lowers the risk for them buying in bulk of things that they might not sell. It makes it a better um, fit for us as well because we're not the type of people that will just sell you 500 units and then shut the door and run away Do you know we're trying to build sustainable relationships with all of our customers so I think by encouraging people to say well actually do you need 100 hats and do you need them next week like really does anybody really need 100 hats next week well maybe if you've got a big event then yeah but the majority of people could maybe do like smaller batches see how things go test the water a little bit but I think when people have been purchasing overseas and from bigger factories, they've been forced into making those decisions immediately. So it's just about turning it on its head, really, and being honest with our customers and just saying, well, yeah, is, is this really what you want? Or are you just coming to me with this sort of preconception of, of what you've been told before? Because um, making it here with us is, is a much more, well, I think a much more simpler, straightforward process from what I've heard. I've not bought overseas before um, in bulk, so I, I don't really know that I'm just going by some stories that I've heard. So. Um, yeah, I think just just trying to make what uh, what is needed rather than yeah having excess production on the go. Yeah, you do that as well, don't you, Steph? You pretty much make to order. Absolutely, yeah. And it's you know by manufacturing in house, you can be really reactive, and you're only making what you need. It doesn't mean that it's taking a long time. It's just more uh, efficient with the way you do it. And it really you know really agree with what you were saying about. You know, buy less but buy quality. By manufacturing in the UK, we can say to all our customers, you know, we offer a free repair service. We're encouraging you to, you might be spending more, but, you know, the relationship is there. You've, you've got that uh, assurance of quality, um, which you wouldn't get if it was mass produced overseas. So definitely very important. Yeah, I love that re the repair service idea. And you couldn't do that if you were buying something overseas. You couldn't send it back. I think so many more businesses are, are offering that definitely fantastic <laughs> sorry to jump in i think it's a really interesting point that, that everyone's made about reducing minimum order quantities for the customers that i think that's a really interesting point and can only be achieved by making it here in the uk mm. yeah definitely yeah. i'm a big advocate of that well um thank you so much all all four of you for joining me do you want to have any last words that you'd like to say let's start with you, Neville and Karen, about Made in UK Day and why you make in the UK? Well, we, we're a family business. We've had both our sons working with us and we're, we're employing local people who, you know, may have gone out of the area for work. We're keeping the skills alive and our plan is to introduce it to a new generation. So 
um, thanks for doing the Make It British and for pushing it so hard. Um, you, you took a leap of faith, you know, is it 10 years ago or nine years ago? 11 now. 11 yeah. years ago, so yeah. You've been pushing it for all that time and now is, you know, it's coming to fruition. We all want to make in the UK and we're, we're happy to support people who want to contact us and get their stuff made in the UK. So get on the phone to us <laughs> now. Right. So how can they, what's the best way they can find you? Obviously they can click through to your Instagram profile now, but what's just, do you want to just uh, say the best way that people can contact you then? Well, contact us through the, the um, email, karen at cushions.co.uk is the simplest and uh, we can pass it on to our uh, production team. Um, oh. and we, we have got MOQs. <laughs> Brilliant. Love it. And Steph, then any last words you'd like to say today about why you make in the UK? And also don't forget to tell everyone where they can find you. Yeah, I think the, the, the main thing to say a huge thank you to you, Kay, and Make It British for championing uh, all of us who do manufacture. It's not the easiest or the cheapest way to do it, but it is for all, all of us. It's the right thing to do and the right way to do it. Um, but again, you know, we started manufacturing for other brands as well. Um, and it's, you know, small uh, quantity we're not committing to huge amounts of stock so as if we can support other companies to manufacture here then that's fantastic but you can find more information about something wicked um on our website which is somethingwicked.co.uk and our instagram's at we are wicked uk you'll find us on facebook twitter pinterest all the usuals brilliant Bye. and finally over to you alison um yeah we uh we just love what we do that's why we like making here. <laughs> uh, we love having a little team and um, training everybody and working together and being able to be quite spontaneous with our designs and our development. And it's just it's a really interesting way of life. And not, it's not for everybody making things, but everybody that's in here is, is genuinely passionate about knitwear and, and wants to um, keep improving, keep building on their skills and, uh, yeah, just see what the future holds for us. So, um, But to get in touch with us, uh, you can contact wonky woolies i've got Just my sticker I've, I've got my wonky because i bought my son one of your wonky woolies hats. Oh, and say, the quality was amazing oh I've fantastic Woolies sticker on my laptop <laughs> excellent thank you yeah it's wonky woolies um dot com um and if you want to get in touch for any custom or bespoke work then um it's alison at wonky uk um, or give us a call just call us we're much better on the phone and in face to face than sometimes online because um we are all kind of hands on deck but uh we do try our best to, to keep on top of all of that as well so well you uh, were amazing on this live all, all four of you were amazing thank you so so much for joining me today take care bye, okay. bye. bye. Okay, bye.